Working in the trim department, you have to be a little more careful than other trades because you gotta make sure to move through the house without damaging everything. And if you've done other stuff in construction, it might be hard because the natural reaction if something bothers you is to hit it with a hammer. This is the hammer they give you in trim. You only have to go to Montrose for the initial training, but it seems to me you gotta bring a good amount of the town with you. After you're done with training, they give you all the trim equipment you're gonna need. Uh, and to be honest, I thought they were just gonna hand me some weird looking wrench, but no, they gave me all this stuff. I lug around all my tools in my car and do you know how hard it is to go on a first date with a table saw in your back seat? That coupled with the fact that I wear a ski mask does not show my sensitive side. If you multiply all this equipment by the five people on my crew, I think we are collectively Montrose, Minnesota. One of the benefits of the trim over other departments is you work indoors year round. So it's warm in the winter and not too hot in the summer. Uh, and there's no uniform. So despite everything in the house having to look really good when you're done with it, this is pretty much a job you can wear any sort of shirt to. When you're working with so much equipment, it's important to have everything organized. I make sure I know where everything is in my tool belt, around my workplace, even the stains on my pants. So from the knees down, it's all dust. Then there's some putty smears right here. It's just a little bit of mustard. I don't know what that is. I should, it's very colorful. Um, and this is a mix of mud and chocolate. But everything above that I keep spotless. I don't want people to think I'm some sort of animal. As far as the actual work and trim goes, you're starting in on the ground up. Literally. The first few months here, you're gonna work on baseboards until you get really good at it. You get to use cool equipment like a stud finder, and I'm not really sure how it works, but it seems to be pretty good at finding them. There's something therapeutic about working with your hands at a simple, steady pace. You know, you can watch your mood change the more you work during a day, and uh, this, this is a coping saw. It's to cope the sides of wood, but I think it's named that because it helps cope on more than one level. When you do everything right, it looks like this. After you get really good at doing bass, you move on to other stuff like, uh, like, what? Well, I don't know personally, but you do move on. Something happens eventually. Something's gonna happen. I don't know what's taking this guy so long, but once you get good at the base, they'll teach you cabinetry, window boxes, and doors. Like any construction job, you gotta deal with and correct some of the stuff other departments that came before you didn't do properly. Not only that, but with trim, since you're one of the last people to come into the house before the homeowner sees it, you don't get the luxury of blaming your mistakes on the people who come in after you. Yeah, it was electricians. They always screw things up. Coyotes. Some people with their jobs, they work indoors and they have to go to the gym to work out afterwards. But this, you take care of both of those things in one shift. Basically, the only thing I have to do when I get home is iron my pants. One of the great parts of this job is once you're done, you don't have to take your work home with you. Sort of. <laughs>